so I'm gonna be showing how to rebuild this little hub assembly right here. Uh, if you came from my other video where I'm putting the whole coilover suspension and rebuilding my whole front end on my Lexus, putting the big brake kit on it from the LS 1200 and all that stuff, uh, you were probably wondering why I didn't show how to rebuild the hub assembly. Well, that's probably because it was going to add a lot to that video, and I'm pretty sure that video is already how long as it is. So, step one is to get your hub assembly off. <laughs> it's late. It's very late. So step one to get the hub assembly off. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just take off the lower control arm, or lower ball joint, tie rod end, and the upper control arm uh, bolts, and it should pop right off. I think if I'm forgetting something. Also remove the brakes and stuff. Uh, better get just watch the other video. The link will be in the description below and how I did it. Now that I wasted 53 seconds of your time. Let's get started. Step one is I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to go around here and remove this uh, grease cap. Uh, that should be pretty easy. Sadly, my camera is broken. I don't have a tripod attachment for my phone, so I can't really be showing you this in real time. But yeah, hammer, go around the edge, the lip of the gas, the grease cap, and just start hammering it out. It's pretty simple. You can probably figure it out. Okay, so next step, right, is once this guy is off, I'm probably gonna end up putting the hub assembly in like a vise or something and just putting a screwdriver in here popping this out and seeing if i can take it off with an impact gun or a breaker bar i'm gonna be careful to not tighten it too hard on the actual lug studs and uh this shouldn't be too hard to be honest with you so i forgot that we moved the vice and like the vice table into the backyard and i'm trying to not make too much noise considering it's 3 48 in the morning so i'm not going to be using an impact gun Instead, what I'll do is I'll lock it in here, uh, loosen this little guy right here by putting a screwdriver in there and opening it up and just use a breaker bar and get it out. Shouldn't be that hard. I keep saying that, but I feel like I'm going to jinx it. Let's see. So I just want to, I don't know if this is just tricks being played on my head, but our backyard is a mess and we're slowly cleaning it up. It's it, like, it's, it's been a process, right? And like every time a bush rustles, I'm like freaking out in case there's some kind of like rat or giant tarantula that's going to come out and eat me. Okay, so I've basically undeformed the little lock nut. And this, again, since it's like 4 in the morning, I'm going to use this breaker bar instead of an impact gun. Oh, it should, it should look better to be honest with you. So here we go. Okay, so now that the lock nut is off, uh, next step is to pull this little wheel off. So I believe it's just a Hall Effect wheel or something. It goes to the wheel speed sensor. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two fingers in here. Or use two hands again later. And I'll pull this little guy out. Should be pretty easy. Okay, so yeah, this is it right here. It literally just slid right out. Super easy. Now, there's the bearing. So I don't think this bearing is bad, but like at the same time, it doesn't exactly look healthy, if you know what I mean. I'm going to replace it anyway. Besides, I got to push the hub assembly out to get this dust shield off. This is going to sound kind of dumb, but if you look right there, uh, these are Torx head bolts, right? I thought there was going to be no way for me to actually, like, you know, pop a torque head in there and uh, loosen the dust shield. Turns out I'm kind of dumb and it's just a 10 millimeter bolt. Yeah, very easy. Uh, so there's four of those bolts. I'm just going to loosen it just so it's easier for me to, like, uh, adjust it around because I'm about to pop it on the press to pro uh, get the hub assembly out. Now, uh, I know what you're saying. Why don't you just take off the dust shield like this? Well, it's still held in by the hub assembly. And again, I'm replacing the bearing. So yeah, this is going to take a minute. Link. Okay, so actually I didn't even need to remove this. It just laid the nice and flat on the hub assembly, but it was better safe than sorry. So the plan is to have the press push down on this hub, and it should just pop. Actually, that doesn't make any sense. Hold on, I'm being dumb. That'll just bend the hub. Hmm. This is why you always do a double take. Because I would need to have some way of like holding this up by here, but even then the hub is too wide. Because I'm pretty sure the best course of action would be to push this guy out through here. Hmm. Let me think this through real quick. So I've been doing some searching along around, and uh, I have a couple different options, right? One option is I could cut this dust shield, just rip it off with some tin snips. Put some put something up to hold it up and then just uh pop it right off other option is well would have been to take this thing off with a slide hammer which i just so happen to have 
but did not utilize. That gives me a couple other options. One, I could try to like vice grip it to something or have something hold it in place and uh, put the slide hammer on there and try anyway and see if it'll come out. At which point I can take off the dust shield without cutting it and maybe things will be a bit easier. So I'm going to try the slide hammer first. If that doesn't work, I'm going to just put some blocks of wood, cut this off and press it out. Let's see. Okay, so it's 5 a.m. The sun is coming up, but there's two things in my head right now. One, I got to find three lug nuts that I don't really give a shit about. I have my nice fancy gold uh, that I keep on my IS. I don't want to mess those up because I'm pretty sure I'm just going to strip the threads out of them or even the studs. Like my brain is telling me this is perfectly safe, but that little like sphincter tightening feeling where you're not too sure if you're going to die is uh, going off for some reason. This feel, this should be safe. Okay, so end result, this thing is pulled out. What I ended up having to do is uh, I stacked up the little thingy on some wood. I think I showed you that. But what ended up starting to happen is these little plates would start to sink in. And the whole thing would come off while it was on the wood. So what I ended up doing is I put a ratchet and my, or a wrench and a pry bar on uh, both ends side to side to flatten it out. Granted, they both got bent, but it worked. So step two is going to be to pull off this little oil seal. Well, pull the oil seal off. You'll probably have to use a screwdriver in there to pop it in there to get it out, which is what I did. I just popped it back in just to show you. Pull that one out. It's actually a good thing I'm definitely replacing this bearing. So, next thing is to pop this one right back on here and push the outer race of this thing out of here. But here you can see that the inner bearing race is still on here. I went to AutoZone and I got a bearing race puller tool or bearing, uh, bearing splitter basically to remove that. I'll show you how to do that in one second. Okay, so if you look around here, you'll see a little black ring around all this. That's a snap ring. So that little thing has to be pulled out. Should be right there okay so the bearing race is out right there uh, now the plan is just to push the whole thing all the way through okay so uh, just so you know this is how I did it earlier too to actually push this part out of the hub assembly uh, but yeah so I had to stack it up on blocks of wood because the actual hub uh, section is too large to fit through the hole so I used the woods to raise it up but then when I place these two on here, it would keep pressing down when I would press down on the actual thing to press on. So what I ended up doing is I used this wrench and that pry bar to distribute the load. But I look inside of it, I can see some white grease in there. So I'm guessing this is pre-grease, so I'm just going to pop it on the actual uh, hub assembly and send it. Okay, so now that I've determined that that bearing over there does come pre-greased, I'm going to clean all the parts off with brake cleaner. That includes this little hall effect wheel. Uh, the actual... Uh, knuckle itself and the hub assembly and once everything is nice and clean including the snap ring I'm gonna start to put it all together. I want to get this gonna be Not spotless, but just clean enough to the point where I don't mix too much old grease in with the new ones It shouldn't matter, but still actually reassembling everything is not that hard either Where the little snap ring there it is Okay, so I got the knuckle right there. The bearing is right here So all I need to do is pop this guy right here and then we'll use uh, this piece, which is the perfect size for the bearing, and uh, press it in from here. And then, Now since the bearing is pre-greased, it should be fine. And once I'm done pressing it in, I'll force this piece of plastic out, put the snap ring on there. Once the snap ring is on there, I'll put some uh, uh, the oil seal on there, put some multi-purpose grease on the oil seal, and press in the actual hub assembly. Okay, so now the bearing is completely pressed in. You can see how it's uh, pretty much flush against that little lip right there. And the best way to check it is to actually look right there. You see how there's no gap in between the actual bearing race and the hub assembly little thing right there. You see that little line going around? There's no gap there. So the next step is to grab this guy, which I just dropped on the floor, which is the little retainer clip thing. Pop that on there. Okay, so you guys don't have to do this part, but I'm just going to put the old bolts back in here because I don't want water to get in these threads and start rusting away the knuckle. So the little 10 millimeter dust shield bolts are going to go back in. And again, the reason that I'm not going to be uh, 
putting the dust shield back on is I had to get rid of it to run the larger brakes on here. Okay, so this right here is the new oil seal. Uh, you're supposed to coat the actual rubber ring with multi-purpose grease. I got this Mobile One and this STP High Temp Grease, which should do fine for this particular application. So I'm gonna coat the edges of that. And then you're supposed to tap it in with a hammer. Uh, well, a hammer plus that little spacer. So there's a couple parts of the video file that were corrupted uh, and weren't able to edit quite well. So there's two things I want to add into this. One, when you're adding or when you're installing the actual oil seal or grease seal that goes on the bearing, uh, don't use the smaller one. Use one that is exactly the same size as the actual uh, uh, hub so it sets flat. You, the last thing you want is for the oil seal to go in crooked. So just get something that covers the whole surface area and does not and will not fall in to the actual hole. Okay, so here it is. I'm using a 32 millimeter socket to go over the inner bearing race and uh, push this thing in there. Okay, so the inner spline is in, the hub is all put together. What I ended up doing is I used the deep well 32 millimeter socket. I put it on the inner race of the bearing and then I just pressed it on in. Okay, went in nice and smooth. Some molly grease came through from the other side of the seal, but that's no big deal. The next step is I believe to put this little Hall Effect sensor in, or Hall Effect wheel, and then torque it down to whatever hundred some foot pounds it's supposed to be. I'm about to double check that actually. Okay, so there's the ABS sensor rotor. Now this nut's gonna go on here and I think it's it tightened down about 108 foot pounds. So I'm gonna put this back in the vise and get to work. Uh, second thing is once that rear hub nut is back installed again, uh, you need to deform. Okay, so once you've actually properly torqued down this uh, hub nut bolt to 108 foot pound, put the dust cover back on, make sure it's completely flat. I believe the lower control arm ball joint bolt is 91 foot pounds, the tie rod bolt is 50 foot pounds, and the upper control arm bolt should also be 50 foot pounds. Uh, if you want to see how I did all this stuff, uh, I post a video in the, the description down below, or hit subscribe, or just check out my channel. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I still got to finish it up, put the brake pads in, brake hardware, but I got the stainless steel brake lines on, coilovers on, EVC rotors on, LS400 calipers painted and on, uh, all new suspension components put on, like, that's like literally everything from outer tie rod, uh, let's see both the lower control arms, upper control arm, sway bar end link, all that's brand new. So yeah. This car was abused, but I'm finally taking care of it, getting some stuff done. Once I take care of all the suspension stuff, I'm gonna pull the intake plenum off, do redo the Valkyrie gasket, spark plugs, PCV valve, figure out why it keeps blowing those out, probably because the PCV valve is bad. And then I got this guy that's going on, which is me wide body. This part I'm actually really nervous about because I'm not too sure where to cut just yet. But anyway, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more stuff, subscribe. And do whatever else you do on the internet. Have a good one.